Thomas returned every summer to the studio he rented on a farm near Catskill Village. It was there that he met and fell in love with the farmer's niece, Ma Maria Bartow. They were soon married and moved into the main house, sharing it with her sisters, uncle, and many house guests. Thomas's art students also joined him there to go sketching in the mountains, and soon there were cold children. It was a busy household. Thomas loved the way the houses of ancient Rome de were decorated, so he gave his own walls a similar treatment. It was his way of sharing the inspiration of Italy with everyone who came to his home. He never lost his love for the decorative painting, nor for Italy. And as I said, I've been to the house. I was in the house last summer, Thomas Colt's house. It's a museum now. And even inside, some of the rooms still have this painting on the wall that he did. Thomas still loved to wander the hills with his sketch pad, but as the years passed, he used the time more for thinking. He looked back on his life and wondered if he had actually made a difference in the world. People often said that his art showed what it meant to be American. Now he simply wanted to show what it meant to be human. To do this, Thomas created a series of paintings portraying a person's journey through four stages of life. He called it the Voyage of Life, and it became the most, his most famous work. Reproductions of it are still sold today. Childhood. The first painting shows an innocent child in a golden boat at dawn, protected by a guardian angel. Youth. By noontime, the child is now a young man, leaving the angel behind as he goes out into the world to follow his dreams. Thomas probably remembered his own journeys across Pennsylvania on foot when his dreams kept him going. Manhood. The man is now middle-aged, like Thomas. He is lost in a storm with a broken rudder. Alone in the world, he prays for help. Old age. It is now evening, and the man is old and humbled by life's journey. His work is done. The angel has returned to guide him home. Sadly, Thomas did not live to see this last phase of his own life. He died of a sudden illness six years after painting the series. America mourned his passing. Thomas Cole left the world too soon, but his work launched a movement that became far more important than anything he could have imagined. His genius for capture, capturing the American landscape drew other artists to follow him. Frederick Church, Asher Durand, and many others were inspired to paint a natural scenery in a style that came to be known as the Hudson River School of Art. It was the first art movement that was truly born in America. But Thomas's influence went much further than art. Americans gradually came to understand his message of saving the environment while there was still time. And we know that message today. By the 1870s, large areas of pristine wilderness were being preserved from destruction. They eventually became our first national parks. This in turn led to the modern environmental movement, which continues to fight today to protect our forests 
air, water, and wildlife. And we know that as protecting wildlife from climate change. But the most important gift that Thomas Cole left us was his perspective on his beloved new country. The vision of a young artist for a young land full of promise and freedom. He showed us a way of picturing America the Beautiful. And that's the end.